Okay. Uh, I guess we can get started. Uh, so initiatives first. Oh, yeah, everyone's put this agenda. Okay, uh, initiatives. Uh, upgrade the GoFS release process. This is me. Uh, we have entered into stage two of our release process for um, uh, Go-FS 0.4.22. Uh, we already have um, early testers running it in uh, dev deployments. Um, we will probably enter stage three next week, assuming nothing goes weird. Uh, upgrade the testing process, uh, also me and the rest of the testing team. Um, uh, we now have regular meetings every Wednesday, 8 a.m. PST. Uh, you can convert that to your local time zone. Um, Alan is currently reviving IPFS benchmarks. Um, and then we're going to try getting Go tested here as well. This is currently, this is built for JavaScript, but they can work for both. Uh, Roll has done some architecture design work for the test lab. Uh, and Jim has done a bunch of work uh, for um, like on like UI mockups. We still need to like make sure we sync between like your we're gonna pull an L of that meeting and sync up on like what IPS benchmarks currently does because we can probably reuse some of the infrastructure, some of the UI, uh, depending on like the test we're trying to run. Um, I'll hand it off to whoever wants to do object question, depending on Jason. Yes. This might have been an Allen issue. That's a Dirk, right? Or it is a Dirk. Yeah, I can talk about that. Um, so basically, we're trying to uh, just kind of close out that garbage collection uh, PR that's that's been running for quite a while now. Um, so with Alan, I was talking about it, and we thought it would probably be best to try to get something something out there because there was kind of like a lot of ideas uh, about improvements that can be made to it and, and ways of doing it better. Um, so we're just trying to kind of narrow down the scope to a minimum viable garbage collection, uh, and then open issues for for outstanding stuff. Um, I'm kind of splitting my time between that and uh, ramping up on improving IPFS performance for Go IPFS. For delegated routing, is that a Allen thing? And Allen happens to not be with us. Is uh, that's both an Allen and a Martin. I think Vidal can talk about it. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, yep. So uh, it's something I've been looking at for at for my integration with Brave. Uh, basically. Uh, it's a nice stopgap until we implement peer -to actual peer-to-peer -peer transport. We would uh, ship uh, uh, embedded JSI PFS that does uh, delegated routing. And uh, I've been debugging uh, performance a uh, bit deeper uh, last week and today. And basically, we need to, uh, like the, the, there's a performance problem of how those modules are implemented right now. There are no throttling, and we have limitation of how many uh, uh, concurrent requests uh, we can do uh, for a single domain in web browser. And also, we are doing uh, swarm connect constantly, uh, which is not necessary. At least we could throttle it uh, over some uh, window time windows. So I got some changes uh, locally that I will PR uh, that should address that. There's a separate topic of. Uh, gateway API commands uh, configuration option in Go IPFS not wired uh, into anything. Uh, I talked about this briefly with Steven uh, that like it's like eventually need to be wired up, but for immediate immediate need, it's to uh, get those uh, lp 2 p modules uh, responsible for delegated uh, routing to the point where we can actually sh ship them with uh, JSAPFS. Like the current version will just flood. Uh, not only the web browser, but also our uh, preload nodes uh, toggle uh, DDoS protection. So when I uh, decrease the the, the flood, uh, it still got blocked on the other end. Uh, so we need to, we need to figure out both the library and also configuration of our preload nodes to handle a lot of requests. Uh, because 
we can we will decrease the number of requests sent from individual node but if we deploy it as a default or like as a opt-in uh, and people by default will use our preload nodes uh, uh, just like they did with uh, websocket star will quickly run into similar problems uh, i guess that's like current state I think Vashko's out, um, but he's working on, uh, I believe, getting the fallback implementation finished up. Uh, the base gossip sub implementation is done, and I think we've got the work done for uh, falling back to flood sub, but we need to finish up interop tests in uh, for Go and JS, and then we should hopefully be able to release that soon. So uh, I guess it's subdomain so gateways now, and that would be my login. Uh, yep. Uh, I believe uh, we sort of got a better idea uh, how to handle this uh, for the local host. Um, had a sync today with Steven. We there's like a sort of clear clear path forward to for local host isolation between subdomains and uh, path based gateway uh, an unknown problem is uh, how to handle those uh, all those bash scripts that uh, expect uh, path uh, based gateway i mean if we uh, suddenly start redirecting path based gateway endpoint to the subdomain one uh, that will introduce http uh, redirect and a lot of scripts uh, out there in the wild are not expecting uh, redirect and will just uh, crash um, but that's something we can mitigate by uh, uh, enabling redirect only for web browser user agents initially mostly we, like we care about origin separation in web browsers so that makes sense um, is anything I missed, Stephen? Uh, well, there's one more thing here at the very end, encoding uh, PRIDs as CIDs. Uh, I'd like to get people to look at this. Um, unfortunately, the people who really look at this are the, the B2B folks. Well, I guess Jacob is here, Aiden, so. Oh, he's like, okay, so yeah, people are here. Um, uh, yeah, basically we have two options. We can either do this in the B2B and make this work for all CIDs, or we can do this, or sorry, all PRIDs, or we can do this as a hack of the gateway, I'd like to do it down lower, uh, just because it makes it simpler. Uh, so I guess next is um, replica consolidation. Yeah, so similar to what Go LibPDB core did um, and consolidated all those repos, we're gonna do some of the similar uh, with JS LibPDB core modules and then with the JS LibPDB interfaces, we'll join this. Um, so I'm gonna be working on that this week. Um, start with the interfaces because that's the least obtrusive thing and then work my way to uh, JS and then we'll probably just do repo consolidation first but then look at what we can do to optimize tests. Steven? Uh, I, I have a quick concern here. Uh, in go IPFS, go dash dash core are core, that, that's the interface repo. Um, so I want to make sure that we don't have a situation where like that's our interfaces and then JS has an interface repo and core means something totally different. They were confused because there's just no end. Um, so what do you mean by core? Do you mean like core primitives, core, like what? So it will be, so it's basically all of the modules that JS LibPDP needs to function by itself. So add the connection monitor repo, um, not the interfaces themselves, but the actual code we're gonna bring uh, to one central repo. Is there any way we could change this around? <laughs> I'm just like, yes, this makes sense, but it's going to really cause a lot of confusion because again, like in Go, we have all the interfaces in core. Cause we say like, this is, there are all the interfaces and our like basic data structures, like peer ID definitions, uh, all that kind of stuff in this one repo. So it's like, the idea is like, you should be able to implement or import any LibPDP implementation, but then use the interfaces in core. It's like the, the standard thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just concerned like, 
are you just getting hung up? Like, is it the naming that you're you're yes. concerned about? It, yeah. So it, it, it'll just be JSLibPDP. So we'll be pulling those sub modules into the, lib, the JSLibPDP repo. Oh, okay. Okay. But I could say it was like, if we have a JSLibPDP-core repo, and it does no. something very different than go than go to the food score. You're looking at these. Okay, good. No, so we'll have we'll end up with JSLibPDP, which will have those other those base those core modules in it, um, and then we'll have the JS interfaces repo, which will have all of our our combined interfaces for JS. Okay, wonderful. Got it. Uh, then I guess we're now on to blockers and asks. Uh, I have one ask. Uh, I have said I have a lot of one on ones on Mondays to distribute knowledge and have time to actually sync with people um, so that I keep things on my plate and keep it visible. If you want one, ping me. Uh, I guess next one Hannah is wondering uh, if there is a JS BitSwap person. Uh, apparently, they do exist. Uh, who is that? I guess that's me. I'm the uh, repo maintainer. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, just to double check. I, are, are you, because I met someone at Team Week who is like, I've just been brought on to do JS BitSwap. And then I don't know if they're still there or I haven't heard from them. Did I say that? Is that you? <laughs> Probably I said that. <laughs> What's up? Okay. Oh, oh, well, honestly, I just want to make sure if you, if you need if you ever need time to check in with me about like things that have happened in Go IPFS BitSwap uh, that you're looking to bring over to JS IPFS BitSwap, uh, just I just want to let just say that I'm available, but you should pay me. So okay, that's yeah, all. definitely. Thank you. That's all I got. Any other blockers or initiatives? Now, I, can, I can talk briefly about where I can ask things are at right now, um, which is just there is in my the, the me list down below, there's a PR that's tracking all of the uh, pub sub IPNS stuff. There are or an issue tracking all of the PRs. There's four that are outstanding that are like basically there. I showed a demo during, uh, during IPFS camp. Just need to get those over the line. And then we probably will need to start working on like these the features of IPNS that we have neglected because it was slow, um, like local pinning. Um, there have been some pre-existing issues about that. I linked one of them. Uh, it just you should be able to start up your node in the same way you have pinned content. You should have pinned IPNS records. It's as simple as that. Uh, and then. There's, there's sort of two tangential issues. Like one is maybe splitting off IPNS from IPFS because there have been requests from a number of parties about that. Um, just being able to use that separately. And then also figuring out like how much and when do we need JS Go compatibility between these things. Um, that's the current state. Yeah. If there's any questions. I think that's it. Unless we're actually at a parking lot. Uh, okay, and that's If there's anything you want to say about that. What? Uh, anything you want to say about the parking lot issue? Oh, no, no, no. I, that's just okay. me being excited because Brassic is done -ish and IPLD selectors are connected. Many years coming. That's awesome. Congrats. Okay. Now we just need to see it fail when put in production with Falcon. I mean, or like not fail, but like, you know, fix it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that's it. Um, have a wonderful week. See you.